Hey guys, it's Pierre, the Fish Beast. Today I'm doing a fish room tour video. This is actually a reshoot of my original video because when I uploaded that, it looked kind of weird and my voiceover was all weird, so I'm trying a new way of doing my voiceover with this uh, headset microphone that I have, uh, and I'm taking this on my cell phone, so pardon the video. Again, I'd like to dedicate this to Joel G. Uh, he's one of my online uh, buddies at our very own Washington Fish Box Forum. So let's get started. We're here in my entryway where I have my biggest aquarium. And as you can see, it's broken down. There's no fish in it. Um, the reason that it's here is that I painted the back recently. And this is the stand it came with. I bought this tank a few months ago. I haven't been able to put fish in it, but this is going into our main living area and I plan to put bigger fish species in this aquarium. The next tank that I'd like to show you is this 10 gallon planted low tech aquarium that contains my cherry shrimp. And if you look at my other videos, you'll see that I've been very neglectful to this aquarium up until recently. But after a few water changes, which are still ongoing, I haven't found that any of the shrimp have died, so I'm very thankful for that. They're still active, even my crystal red shrimp is still alive. Now this is filtered with a sponge filter. Light that I use for this is a do-it-yourself LED light. That I put in some rain gutter. And uh, that cost me about 20 bucks. The next aquarium I have is actually an aquarium that I had my spotted Congo puffer in up until recently. But in this aquarium, which I'm using to quarantine, is a very interesting fish. He's very shy right now, but you can see part of his tail back there. And in a future video, I will tell you what kind of fish this is. Again, this is filtered with a regular sponge filter, and um, it's got some flowing plants, some Indian almond leaf, and this is a light I bought, it's a 10 gallon fluval light. We are now here in what could be considered my main fish room, which is actually a small corner of our garage. And right now, my car, which I have been able to park in here recently, has been relegated once more to the outside because of that new tank in the back there. It's a 120 gallon, a four foot aquarium that I will be painting here very soon and I hope I can show you that process on video. Anyway, let's take a look at the tanks we have here. This is a 2.5 gallon tank, which is my snail farm. It's got a sponge filter and a little heater in it and some hornwort just floating around, not really anchored to anything. And I wanna show you hundreds of baby snails on the glass Here's a dead a golden snail that I have that unfortunately probably had some kind of nutritional deficiencies. But circle of life, I threw it in here and the snails have been eating its carcass. So hopefully they can get some calcium and recycle that into their own shells. Now, the reason I have a little snail farm, these are pond snails. So you can see their eggs on the glass there. There's lots of eggs. The reason I'm farming them, there's tons of baby snails on this heater, is uh, to feed the next fish I'm going to show you. This is a 55 gallon, four foot tank, and it's filtered with a sponge filter. I've got some plastic decorations in there with some fern. And the only inhabitant of this aquarium as of recently, it's this cute little guy. He's my spotted Congo puffer. Very cute. Look at that face. Hi, what's going on? Loves to eat snails. This is the direct recipient of the products of my snail farm. Below that aquarium is another 55 gallon tank. And this is actually a cooler water tank that I am running. I've got it running at about 66 degrees. And the reason is that I have some cooler water fish in here. 
such as these white cloud minnows, very beautiful fish, very underrated, and also these dojo loaches. This is a regular colored dojo loach, and I've got some golden dojo loaches in here, as you can see, and I have these pandagera. These are very interesting fish, very active, very colorful. I do have a lot of algae and other growth because of the high amount of light that I have on, on this tank. Now the main reason I set this tank up are these guys. Can't see them very clearly. These are hillstream loaches. Hillstream loaches are specialized little fish that live in a little bit cooler water, but they also like high water flow. And I achieve that by using this power head directed on a rock. And what these guys will do is they will use their modified pectoral fins to cling on to rocks and other surfaces and then graze off of aufwuchs, which is surface growth. You will see these fish in Petco or PetSmart, but most of the time they don't know really how to take care of them. They really like a high flow environment with cooler water to make sure that the oxygen level is nice and high. This tank is filtered with a power head attached to a sponge filter. I've got a circulation pump in there. I also have a ton of duckweed here. A very invasive, but I guess beneficial plant that floats on the top. I also have a bunch of pothos. These are your standard hanging viney plant that you can buy from anywhere pretty much and they grow very fast. I've got their roots dipped into the water and they help clean the tank by sucking up waste. I plan to move these guys to another tank that I'll show you here in a little bit. Next we have this 120 gallon 5 foot tank which I am right now only filtering with sponge filters. I love sponge filters. It's kind of a grow out tank for some of my fish. It also has some random fish that I plan to move to other tanks in the future. In here I've got uh, electric blue acara. Very pretty fish. I've got some rainbow fish, red irian and bozeman. Just two of each. I, I plan to get more. This is a chocolate cichlid. That's a wild caught severum. I also have in here a datnoid or Indonesian tiger fish. You can barely uh, make him out there. His silhouette of his face he likes to hide in that cave. I also have in this aquarium, unfortunately, a red belly paku that my son Shane loves so much. These fish should not be sold in pet stores because they can get to almost three feet in length and they're very powerful. You will need at least a 600 to 1000 gallon aquarium to really house one of these, unfortunately. And I'd like to also try to show you one of my wild caught biker that's in here somewhere. He's a Polypterus endlicheri. A little peacock eel back there. Paku's little cute face. Paku are so cute, but they just get so big. They should really not be sold. I have to figure out what to do with this guy. I can't find the biker. He's in there somewhere, lurking around. Look at this fire mouth. He acts tough, but he's really a big sissy if, if a fish steps up to him. A little bit of missing scale up there. The last aquarium that contains fish currently is the 75 gallon. A four foot aquarium, which I'm filtering with a Marineland hang on back filter and also a Fluval 306. This tank contains four fish. This Polypterus Lapridae that only has one fin and who is now known as Stumpy. The Albino Senegal biker in the back there, very active, very hungry. I've also got an ornate biker. This guy's about seven inches long. He's really cowardly. Hi there. What you doing? And then inside this PVC pipe is Jabba. He's a jaguar catfish. 
He's very shy, he only comes out when it's dark. My other aquarium is still empty, but I'm planning to set this up as a hill stream tank, which is a high flow tank like the 55 gallon I showed you earlier. And I'm planning to move all of my fish there into this aquarium. Now the reason I'm moving them is not just to upgrade their living quarters, but also I'm going to set this tank up with a river manifold. A river manifold is a way to provide unidirectional flow in an aquarium. So I'm using PVC pipe to set that up. Um, I'll probably talk about this project a little more one of these days when I finally have it set up. But the idea is that water goes in on one end of the manifold and gets pumped back out the other end using power heads and where they enter the manifold is sponge filters. The last aquarium I want to show you is this 40 gallon breeder which has just a different variety of community fish. Among them are this male betta. Gets along with everybody in here. I've also got glowfish which are genetically engineered, very colorful, luminescent, iridescent, fluorescent zebra danios. I've got glow light tetras, very peaceful schooling fish. I've got Otosynclus catfish. I always get a school of these, minimum of five to six. I used to have CO2 in this tank, but it seems to be doing okay. These are easy to grow plants. Uh, when I stopped the CO2, everything was fine. And so, this tank also has an insulated back. I'm not sure why I did that. Maybe to save energy, I guess. So I've taped some uh, foam insulation here. I don't know uh, how much R units uh, it's insulating the tank, but every little bit helps, I guess. I've got two 36 inch lights going here and I'm filtering this with uh, sponge filters only. So that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope to bring you more videos, more updates.